<clears throat> Welcome back. In a previous video, we have introduced the um, cost function for linear regression, which is in this form of the so-called mean square errors, sum of mean square errors. So um, the cost function looks like this way. It is a summation of, um, of the difference between the predictive value y hat, or in this form, minus the actual label uh, raised to the power of two, and then um, take the summation and then average uh, with the normalized by the total number of instances by two. So this is the form of the uh, cost function. And they, it, is a, it, it is a function with respect to the parameters, which is theta zero, the intercept, and theta one, the slope. So now our goal is to uh, optimize or to minimize this cost function. Okay, so we will uh, introduce two methods. First one is called the normal equation and the second one is called the gradient descent. So we will go through these two methods uh, one by one. So first of all, let's look at the uh, problem itself. It's, it's about to minimizing some function. Right, so we can further expand the cost function. It is the quadratic term, right? The um, y i minus f theta of x i raised to the power of two. So we know that the f function is in theta zero plus theta one times x i. So we substitute that into the uh, expression into the uh, expression, and we've got this new equation here, and we further uh, expand this term uh, within the summation symbol, okay? We keep the summation symbol. We are expanding each item of the summation. So uh, the result of expanding it looks pretty long, right? But the principle is that the function is a function, the cost function is a function with respect to theta zero and theta one. So only thetas are the unknown variables. And we can treat the, all the yi's, xi's times yi's, all these x and y's, they are actually, we can think of them as constants. So we can actually simplify the term, simplify the, <coughs> Um, expressions further into this quadratic function, into this quadratic gen generic quadratic function. So we uh, use a to represent the coefficients before theta zero and b for theta for theta zero or uh, a for theta zero square, and so on. So uh, this is just for simplification. We can think of this whole uh, bunch of equations into this one. Okay. In nature, it is just a quadratic function, but with two variables, we have theta zero and theta one. Okay. And all the, we also know that all the coefficients uh, before the quadratic term, which is a here and c here, c here, they are greater than zero. This is also important um, uh, in later step because uh, if we consider a quadratic function with one variable, the coefficients before the quadratic term determines whether the open it's opening upwards or downwards. Okay. All right. So uh, that's what we've got so far. So the knowledge that it is a quadratic function will help us to decide what the next step will be to minimize the function. All right. So let's think about a, a easier problem of minimizing some uh, a quadratic function with respect to just one variable x. Okay, so this is uh, a generic form of quadratic function. fx equals a times x squared plus b times x plus c. So we know that the shape looks like this way if the a is greater than zero. It's facing upward. The opening is facing upward. So that means we can always find a point, right, that minimize the function. Okay, and the function has minimal value when the derivative is the first order derivative of the function equals zero. So the derivative is the rate of changing. So whenever, wherever the zero derivative is, the function minima, uh, reaches the minima, minimal point. 
right? So if we take a derivative of the function fx with respect to x, then it will give us a, a linear function and we a linear equation and we solve it. We we'll make it zero and solve it. We will have that x is negative b over two a. So that's the point where uh, the function reaches the minimal point. Okay. So that is the case for the uh, quadratic function with respect to one variable. And act actually, the same thing that we need to do with respect to the cost function here. So because right now the cost function for linear regression has two variables, theta zero and theta one. But we can do the same thing, right? By uh, finding the points where the partial derivatives of the cost function with respect to theta zero and to theta one, they equal zero, okay? As long as the uh, two derivatives, they reach zero, then the quadratic function reaches its minimal points. Okay. So uh, the trick of taking partial derivatives is that when we consider the partial derivatives of j with respect to theta zero, we can consider the theta one as a constant. And likewise for uh, the partial derivative with respect to theta one, when we computed computed that value, then theta zero can be viewed as constant. Okay, so let's uh, do the trick. Um, the so we need to uh, observe the uh, forms of the cost function. Okay, uh, and now remember our goal is to take the derivatives of the function. So. It looks like this, right? We don't need to expand it because taking the rules uh, of the partial derivative, we just need to consider each item here. And we need to uh, remove the uh, exponent term, right? If we take the derivative of this item with respect to theta zero, then we need to take this exponent, exponent into product form, right? We basically take the two uh, out here and these two will eliminate, right? And what's left in the exponent term is one. So here's one, so which is basically uh, nothing, right? And then what's left in each item here is just a linear term, okay? So we take a derivative with respect to theta zero and we, we need to uh, make it zero, right? And also the coefficient, why there's a negative here? Because the coefficient of theta zero is negative one. So we basically take that out as a result of taking derivatives, okay? And then there's another variable. We do the same thing, right? Now we need to take the derivative with respect to x, uh, with respect to theta one. And we do the same thing to remove the exponent Exponent, uh, uh, the number here, two here, we remove it. And also now uh, what's different is that the coefficients of theta one here is negative xi, right? So we need to move this constant out. We move the negative to here and xi to here, okay? So that's the result of taking derivatives and Basically, we need to solve the equations, okay? So we basically need to solve these equations. And remember that we need to keep the summation forms, okay? But we will simplify this summation form because um, the summation of all y's and then divided by n is basically the average y's, the mean y's, right? The summation, of um, because i ranges from one to m, right? m is the number of total instances. And the summation of uh, one here, because the coefficient is one, right? From i to m will result in m, but that m eliminates with the m here in the denominator, 
Okay, so with uh, some steps of simplification, we will get these two equations. Okay, these two equations is basically from that the above equations. So here we have some uh, new terms. Um, the y bar here is the average value of all y's in our data. And the x bar here is all the average, is the average of all the x's in our data, okay? So, and this term, the summation of uh, x i squared is something we cannot eliminate because we cannot remove the uh, summation form. All right, so the uh, two equations within this dotted line box is something we need to solve, okay? And actually it's just a simple uh, linear, uh, combo, uh, linear combo equations that we need to solve. We, and the variable is at theta zero and theta one, okay? So we simply give the solution to the previous equation here. Um, Right, there are basically two steps. We can basically solve theta one first. Okay, the solution to theta one is composed of all the data, x and y's, and their mean values here. Okay, so we basically use um, so the the term in the numerator is what we so call what we call the covariance between x and i. And the here is the variance, right? Because we use x to minus the mean values and raised to the power of two and make a summation. So anyway, we can get theta one out of x and y, and then we substitute x one into this term, and we use the mean values of x and y to compute theta zero. So everything can be solved at once. And we can have the theta zero and theta one solves. That means our linear regression model is solved is our model is done. So we know the parameters, okay? So then we can use these parameters to make predictions, right? Remember our question is, problem is to predict the uh, housing price. So now, as long as we know the theta zeros, so given any size, we can use theta one times uh, uh, size and plus theta zero, which will give us the predicted price, okay? So, and in terms of how to uh, explaining or how to ex interpreting the thetas, uh, the theta one is how much price uh, will change when the size changes by one unit, right? Because you, the size increased by one unit, the total price will increase by theta one. And um, that's pretty much of it for the normal equation solutions. Oh yeah, so by the way, this uh, solution is called the normal equation solutions to a simple linear regression model problem. By simple, we mean there's only one predictor. We only use a size as a predictor. If there are multiple predictors, then the form of these normal equations is <coughs> more complex and need to be a better, we better represent it with matrices. So, uh, that's it uh, for the uh, normal equation solution. And in the next video, we will talk about how to evaluate the uh, results of a uh, of solving a linear uh, of a of a lin linear regression model being solved.